Welcome to the Airgun Show. We've got a telescopic sight on test this week, the super sharp MTC Genesis Ultralight. But before that, I'm out in the fields targeting some elusive rabbits. We're after rabbits this evening. I shot a lot of rabbits on this farm through the summer months, but didn't give this area a lot of attention because there didn't appear to be many here. However, the farmer has been in touch with me, says he noticed a few running in the other evening as he pulled into the field. So I assume they've got a grip while I've been targeting other parts of the farm. We'll give it a few hours this evening and see if we can get a few. Daytime rabbit shooting is seldom easy in the autumn months, and it can be even tougher when you've got a cameraman with you causing twice the disturbance for quarry to detect. But you won't succeed if you don't get out there, so it's time for me to load up the Brocock contour and hit the fields. Gun for this evening is the Brocock Contour XL. It's a multi-shot PCP air rifle and it's just a nice, light, compact little gun for carrying around the fields. I've coupled that with the MTC Genesis Ultra Light Scope, 3 to 9 by 40 and like the gun, it's fairly compact and nice and light but it's still got nice bright little optics. It's got the MTC AMD Advanced Mill Dot Reticle which gives plenty of aiming points without being too cluttered. And I also like the nice low turrets on this scope, which would be really handy if I were to use a scope mounted lamp. I'd get plenty of clearance over there. So all in all, it should be just what we need for this evening and hopefully we'll better put it into practice. The hunt begins. I shot over this ground in the past and I can use my knowledge of the terrain to my advantage. I keep as close to the hedge line as the electric fence permits so there's less chance of the conies spotting my outline than if I was out in the open. Treading carefully also keeps noise to a minimum, to avoid detection by my quarry's ears. But all the stealth and field craft in the world won't help me if the rabbits don't show up. Well, I've not seen any sign of a rabbit yet, but to be honest, conditions are far from ideal. I was hoping we might get one or two hours of late afternoon sunshine but uh, it's clouded over and it's even trying to rain now so not perfect weather for rabbits and also because we've had a lot of rain the last few days I'm wearing welly boots rather than the light footwear that I'd really favour for stalking but uh, I'll stick it out and perhaps we'll, we'll come across one or two as the light starts to fade, you never know. With time and conditions going against me I press on and keep my eyes peeled. Luckily, things soon start to look up as I find myself in a much more promising area. Well, although I've not seen a rabbit yet, this area looks really promising. There's a lot of scrapes here, a lot of droppings, and a lot of runs going through into the bramble patch behind me, and I assume the rabbits are burrowing in and amongst that. This certainly looks like the most promising area, so what I'm going to do set up an ambush out in the field and hopefully pick them off as they emerge when the light starts to fade. An ambush position out in the open means I'll be shooting prone, but my choice of clothing should keep me dry in the damp grass. Right, that puts me about 25 metres from the hedge line, which is perfect for uh, taking those rabbits as they emerge and it also gives me quite a wide arc of fire off to the left and right should any rabbits come out to the side I'm happy to take them in these conditions probably at just beyond 30 maybe approaching 35 meters so quite comfortable from here 
useful little tip if you haven't got a bipod fitted on your gun and you're planning an ambush like this from the prone position you want to take nice steady shots in my backpack I've got a hide net which I just keep it on the off chance that I might need it but it also packs out the bag quite nicely to make a decent rest to keep the rifle steady um, at other times when I've been caught out I've taken off a jacket and rolled that up to use it as a shooting rest today it's wet I'm keeping my jacket on so this is going to make a handy little rest for the gun it's been threatening to pour down all evening so I've kept the uh, scope caps down Scope's waterproof and fogproof, but if you can keep rain off it, it helps. But if rabbits come out now, this ambush is all about stealth, so I don't want to be fiddling about with those. I want to take full advantage of the fact that I'm laid up here, low and still, scope caps are up, so I can shoot, moving as little as possible. The scene is set, and thankfully, the rains have decided to hold off, for now but the light is starting to fade and I still haven't seen a single rabbit. Luckily, that's about to change. This young rabbit ventures out from the hedge, seemingly unaware of me. It's in range, so I just need to pick out a clear shot that's not obstructed by the grass and give it a little hold under. there's one out like a light and it goes to show when it's tricky these lay and wait tactics really work I was tempted to go up onto my elbows for that shot just to get a bit of reach over the grass but uh, the bag gave me just enough elevation and I went for the steady shot which paid off now at this stage it's all too easy to want to run in and pick up your rabbit but I'm going to stay tight because the last thing I want to do now is go stomping over those burrows when the rabbits are just starting to come out if I stay here Keep quiet, there's every chance another one might venture out. Once again, it's all quiet on the rabbit front. The wait goes on and on. Visibility begins to drop sharply, but I'm staying put. I won't give up until it's too dark to see. We really are running out of light now, but um, I'm going to give it a few more minutes because this is the time that I really would be expecting them to come out. Right in the last few minutes of shooting light, I get my chance. The camera couldn't pick up much detail in the gloom, but through my scope, the picture is clearer. Not quite the Blackpool illuminations, but enough for a safe and confident shot. Like the first one, it was a little bit closer than the range I've got the gun zeroed for, so I gave it a little bit of hold under. Another good solid hit, good clean kill. We really have run out of light now, I think that's our lot, so I'm going to go over and pick up while we've still got some light to do that by. I 
It's actually got so dark now that the camera was struggling, so we've gone over to Wint for red. Luckily, these rabbits were in short grass, so I didn't struggle to find them. Well, after a slow start, it came pretty good in the end, and it certainly shows the importance of those lay and wait tactics on days when there aren't many rabbits about. I think if I'd yomped around those fields, it wouldn't have been very productive at all. I could have gone on all afternoon, all evening, and not got within range of a single rabbit. But by laying down, keeping still, keeping quiet, it wasn't the most comfortable way to spend the evening, but it, it paid off. The rabbits came to us rather than me trying to trudge around after them. Interestingly, one of the rabbits I've shot, it's only about half grown, and considering how late in the year we are, that's quite unusual, so it's obviously come from quite a late litter. And although we didn't see a lot of rabbits today, there's signs of a lot of damage along that bramble patch where they've been scraping and raking there. So I think there's probably quite a few more than we've actually seen. So I'll be aiming to come back another day, possibly with the lamp now that they're turning a bit nocturnal, and pick off a few more. That certainly proves the point that patience really is a virtue when it comes to hunting. And now, it's over to the Air Gun Show News. This is the Air Gun Show News. Brought to you by the Air Gun Centre. The first news is out of a super secret new air rifle. The Air Gun Center and BSA Guns have spent the last six months working on a limited edition rifle based on the super successful R10 Mark II. Both parties are remaining tight-lipped about what we can expect from the R10 Elite, which is limited to a run of just 100, but have described the new gun as something completely different. It will be available from mid-January with an expected price tag of £999. Basque has launched a web-based general election campaign site to help people lobby their parliamentary candidates on shooting. The only UK lobbying platform on the web devoted to your sport, it will allow voters to identify their local candidates' views on shooting and email them to find out more. It will also enable people to promote shooting to candidates and to invite them to find out more in the run-up to the general election on the 7th of May. Basque chairman Alan Jarrett urged shooters to visit the campaign site at politics.basque.org.uk. Arthur Bale and Sun Gun Shop in Cardiff is set to close following the announcement of owner Martin Bale's retirement and customers are promised lots of bargains in the closing down sale which is already underway. Launched in 1898, the business has established a fine reputation and a loyal customer base in over a century of trading and will be missed by the local shooting community. All at the Air Gun Show wish Martin Bale the very best in his retirement. German Sports Guns has taken over Diana, the manufacturer of popular air guns distributed in the UK by SMK. GSG announced it had agreed a deal to acquire 100% of shares in Diana, which is based in Radstadt in Baden-Württemberg, a four-hour drive from GSG's headquarters in Nordrhein-Westfalen. The deal marks a new direction for GSG, which specialises in tactical-style air guns and airsoft guns as well as 2-2 rifles. There's an alternative to air gun pellets on the market from Milbra, the Mohawk Air Gun Dart. This new all-black-bodied air gun dart was designed in conjunction with the Suffolk firm. In a departure from the standard silver dart, the Mohawk has two black streaks woven into its four traditional colours. And there's a fifth colour available, natural white. Milbra said that even the most serious air gunner would have fun with these darts. That was the Air Gun Show News. The subject of this week's review is a compact and lightweight telescopic sight, the MTC Genesis UL or Ultralight. It costs just £149 and comes with free accessories including a screw-in sunshade and Butler Creek flip-up lens caps. 
It's a three to nine by 40 scope, which means it has a zoom giving magnification between three times and nine times. There's a 40 millimeter objective lens at the front. Lenses are fully multi-coated for optimum light transmission. And I can vouch for their performance having used this scope for hunting in low light. This scope features the AMD Advanced Mill Dot Reticule. The arrangement provides plenty of different reference points without making the scope picture too cluttered and that makes for fast and effective target acquisition. The Genesis UL has a 25mm or 1 inch tube. It's nitrogen purged so it's waterproof, fog proof and shock proof. That means it should stand up to pretty much anything you can chuck at it in the field. The scope weighs in at just 387 grams and measures up at 310 millimetres. It suits compact air guns but also won't add much weight to heavier guns. On top of that, its short length means it shouldn't get in the way of the breech if you shoot a spring or gas ram powered air gun. There's a diopter adjustment ring at the back which enables you to focus the reticule for maximum sharpness. Although this scope doesn't offer fast parallax adjustment, you can adjust focus by screwing off the front ring and twisting the lens. Set it somewhere between 25 and 30 meters and it should be perfect for most air gun applications. Screw the ring back on to lock it down and you don't need to mess about with it in the field. The windage and elevation turrets are nice and low and unlikely to get in the way if you intend to use a scope mounted lamp. Screw off the caps and the dials are finger adjustable, each click amounting to a quarter of an inch at 100 yards. And they're good positive clicks with no hint of any play. You must slacken off the turret lock before adjusting the dials. Once you've got the scope zeroed, lock it back down and everything's fixed in place with no risk of anything creeping. So, with parallax set and the scope zeroed and locked, you're ready for fuss-free shooting. Work out where the vertical aim points correspond with pellet drop and all you need to do is line them up with your target. Despite its modest price tag and proportions, this scope's an impressive little performer with surprisingly bright optics. I've used it for pest control around farm buildings and for low light rabbit shooting at dusk and it's delivered the goods without fail. The MTC Genesis Ultralight is a great scope for anyone looking for a compact, lightweight day scope that isn't going to break the bank. It's well built, looks good and most importantly delivers performance that far exceeds its size and price. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. We'll be back again in a fortnight with the usual mix of hunting, news and reviews. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to protect and promote your sport. Yeah.